Everybody hear me? Okay. <clears throat> All right, so here we are, day two in the afternoon. Um, I'll tell you right off the bat, everything that you're going to see, the notes, everything, they're all on the GitHub. And that'll come back up at the end. Uh, I don't know, I'm a particular fan of trying to listen or take your notes or whatever it is your style is, but this should cover you both ways. Uh, so getting to know you guys here, I'm from Pennsylvania, Monroeville, you know, public education. Uh, how many other public education people we got here? All right. Uh, Jamf MDM? Mosul MDM? Okay, so I'm not outnumbered. <laughs> A uh, little, little bit about me. My computer love starts really with the Commodore 64. Um, yeah, 64, 128, still have them now. Um, you know, I spent a lot of time with that thing. It was a hobby. And then in 99, came to work for Gateway. Uh, with Gateway, year one, right to the max. It's funny, because in 99, everybody was like, well, the max from the way out, and, you know, just, just do that. Uh, I'm sure everybody here knows how that kind of panned out, right? Uh, I've done a couple of these, um, some of them virtual. I will say I like being here. Uh, the virtual ones I did, you have no feedback. You can't see anybody, so you don't know if what you're saying makes sense or not. <laughs> a little bit about Gateway. Like I say, we're out of Monroeville. We have a few machines. We've got a few staff members. Uh, as of the last transition to M1, we are all Mac for staff now. As far as what we have, four of us, a uh, couple buildings, you know, really, uh, like I said, we're primarily a Mac district these days. We have a lot of Chromebooks at the high school, but when you go to elementary, K-8, it's Mac world. Little idea of what we're dealing with, again, going back to like 2011, you know, just a couple of these guys. I think I had like a 10. And the next thing you know, it just, it blows up. Like, you're familiar with gremlins? You know what happens when you get them wet? Well, the iPads break. But in this case, they multiply. Again, things to understand about us, we're a Mosul shop. Um, everything I'm going to show you definitely works with Mosul. <laughs> However, uh, most of it's universal, too. Where it's not universal, I'll make sure to kind of point that out. Um, again, I mean, even if it's not universal, don't be intimidated. Like, Jamf APIs, we were Jamf before. The APIs documented well. It wouldn't take a lot to just, you know, get some coffee or whatever your thing is and work it out. So, again, in Gateway, all the roads on my iPads, they start with Limbo. With Mosul, I have all my iPads set up to be white, and they just go right to the desktop then. Or not the desktop, but like the main screen. Um, and that's pretty much what it looks like. At that point, my kids can log in. And when they log into the Mosul app, all the other apps will show up. Uh, we do this mainly just to speed up deployments. <clears throat> All the iPads in the district come out of our office right now. So at least this way, like Limbo iPads can be inventoried over the air. We can make sure they're up to date. They live in a couple carts that I'll show you in a second here. Um, I think we mainly got into this because when we first deployed iPads, we tried doing it like, oh, hey, here, here it is, out of the box, take it home. And then people call and say weird things like, uh, what's an MDM server error? Can't find it. What is that? At least this way I know everyone we hand out. It at least worked when I handed it to you. <coughs> Here's our carts. These guys hold about 30 a piece. Uh, we keep, what is it like? I, getting, rid of our, getting rid of my sixes this year. So seven, eight, nine. Uh, we're not buying tens this year. Is anybody buying tens this year? Let me know how that goes. Honestly, in the elementary, we're kind of, I don't know, it's hard to keep headphone ports intact. I can only imagine, like, the adapters and everything else. <clears throat> All right, so we're going to talk about CFG Util. Is anybody familiar with CFG Util? All right. So CFG Util comes with Apple Configurator 2. If you click on Apple Configurator from the top left corner, you can install command line tools. That's where you'll find this guy. Um, this tool primarily works when you have trust. However, there are things you can do, and there's also ways around 
I don't want to say around, but other things you can do to get, keep the trust moving. Uh, also, it will be scriptable, which I guess that's kind of the, the topic, right? <laughs> so just trying to get a basic idea of what this command will do. From the command line, you can just type CFG list, CFG util list. Any device that's plugged into your Mac, it's going to list it. Those iPads, iPhones. It'll list MacBooks too. I haven't played with that much, too much yet. Mainly just the iPhone, whatever. And again, from here, we can, grab, we can go and take that ECID, and we can ask again. We can ask for more information. Again, this is a, an iPad. Well, actually, my phone plugged into my Mac with a cable. <coughs> so again, like asking again. You can see, like, we get firmware version, we get the build version. Some of the, I, don't, I go back and forth on this, how important this is. Right now, we're in the process, like, if it's not current, we automatically just wipe it and start it over again. I could easily see maybe not being so critical on this part. Um, maybe at least 16, and we'll get you updates later or something. But right now, this is, this is how we look at it. So what can we do with this information? Again, come back at command line. This command will wipe a device. As long as you have trust, it'll just wipe it out. Grab the latest uh, version for your device, put it on. Again, if there's trust, there's no questions asked. Um, so be careful. <coughs> and this is like using that same command to put a Wi-Fi profile on. Uh, again, in our office, we use Apple Store just to get you started. At one point, that used to just work out of the box. I don't know if anybody remembers that. But when it went away, we kept using it just this way. The last command that popped up there is basically what tells CFG Util to take that device, reach out to DEP, and finish it. You know, when you set up like an enrollment, you can say skip these steps. Well, that's what will happen here. Anything you set to skip, it just gets skipped, and it'll take you through it. Uh, I talked about this a couple times now. And at one point, Apple asked me, well, why aren't you tethering? Uh, I mean, you're already plugging it in. Why not tether? We typically, like in the summer, will take 1,200 iPads to our office. They all go through this, this process. I like to get them to that home screen and then just set them out on a table and keep them moving. Like the kids will bring in a cart with all the iPads up this way, plug them in, go do something, come back, unplug them, push them down the hall. <clears throat> the biggest pitfall of doing things this way comes back to you have to have the same supervision identity for trust. Uh, you know, so if you just take an iPad, you put it out there, most machines aren't gonna trust it. Like, do you, do you guys allow um, pairing with your iPads currently? Yeah, see, we don't. We actually are really strict about what our iPads are allowed to do. Um, but nonetheless, like, if you have that trust, you can still connect. You can still do these things. <coughs> uh, let's see, trust, trust, trust. The big key here, Apple Configurator must be open when you're doing this. The actual GUI. If it's not, you can't touch the keychains, so none of this trust stuff works. Talking about the trust things, ways around it. I mean, you can boot to DFU. Uh, that's really hard in the thumbs after a while, depending on what case you're using. Uh, this is where Mosul starts coming to play with me. We use leverage. We use the MDM to leverage those erase commands. The MDM has to be trusted already. So in those cases where I don't have local trust, I ask MDM to help me. <coughs> This is what uh, man says about CFG util. A couple things I want to point out is like we're going to start talking about uh, scripting. Notice that when you talked about using EXEC to call a script, that's everything I was saying earlier about ECID, like we're going to talk to a particular device. That doesn't matter anymore when you script. And we'll show you that in just a second. Here. The ones we're really going to talk about come back to ECID. UDID, as well as those versions. Uh, I haven't looked at 
Jamf in a while. Like I said, we've been out since April 2020. But in Mosul, the UIDs can be exported. So I use the UI, UDID to match my inventory, my database, and keep track that way as well. <clears throat> so just for a simple script, we're going to run this. And this is basically just using CFG Utility EXE with the A option. All this code here, by the way, it's in that GitHub, it's just in case you can't read it too well. So I ran this, and you're going to see what it's going to put out. Again, in this situation, there's no trust. Trust doesn't really matter. The things we're going to be told, you'll basically, we'll tell anybody more or less. Again, just common stuff, that, that UDID, the ECID, those things. So we were talking earlier about those commands to wipe, like actually just wipe the device out. We're going to try that now. Now I sped this up because the very first time you, you run this command, it's going to go out, it's going to download uh, the latest iOS or iPadOS you need. It's also going to go through this whole unzipping and installing phase. When you do a restore, it takes a while. Now again, if you're doing 30 or 40 of these at one time, it doesn't matter. Uh, I tell you, I, I don't like, like waiting on one, though. They never finish in time. <laughs> so let this go here. When you say 8x, takes about a minute. But you're going to see, like, it's going to go through. It's installing the OS right now. When we go to put the Wi-Fi profile on a few, it'll do some more things. You ever watch paint dry? <laughs> there we go. Automatically, when we add the Wi-Fi profile, it's going to activate the device for us. And then I'll go ahead and grab configs off of DP, and that's it. Like, that, that one is done right there. Is this prepared? Fail. Yeah, they always fail. Um, I've never seen one actually succeed, yet it works. <laughs> And I thought it was my network, but I've tried this a couple places. Uh, I still get that error. So what else do we need here to keep using these things, like to make this useful? We need a kitchen sink, maybe? Probably not. A little logic would help speed up the process. So this is kind of just like a rough overview. And you're going to see, like, the pieces we've already talked about, where it comes to say about, about restoring and applying Wi-Fi, like, they're all here. But I've added a little bit more to that now. Like, let's check the iPad based on what CFG Util will tell us. Has it been set up yet? Is it ever been touched? Is it, what's it doing? If it's just waiting to be set up, we can jump right into the setup process from here. If the iPad is booted and it's paired, of course, we have trust. We can just issue an erase command locally, and it'll erase it right out. And of course, like I say, you follow that line. These are the steps that we were already looking at earlier. So they're all there. We just add a couple pieces to maybe speed it up a little bit. So when we run it, that kind of looks like this. The iPad that's going to run here is actually going to just choose to erase because it knows it's trusted. And I said, just like that, it's erased and done. Whereas before, we watched it restore and it went through all this stuff. So trust is good. And of course, just like the other one, like it'll after it gets through this erase, boots back up, it'll do those same things, the Wi-Fi profile, the activation, and eventually get us back to the main screen. Just waiting for my Wi-Fi profile to fail again. Which one? Uh, WPA2 for now. Uh, yes. I was just called a couple days ago. We're changing everything, though. So we'll see how it works after that. <laughs> I, I don't know. We bought a bunch of missed stuff. So... The other side of our department handles that. They're like, yeah, this is what we're doing. You'll figure it out. Go ahead. So, <clears throat> All right, so we got our prepared down there again. 
So again, the same process we just saw, but this time we use the race instead. I do want to warn you about running CFG util this way. Um, certain chargers, certain hubs create this weird thing where you can get into a loop and the iPad will just never finish. It'll just keep wiping itself over and over again. The re I don't really know the exact reason for that, but it seems like some devices, they're connected, and then when the charging stops, they disconnect for a second, and CFG Util sees that as a reconnection. Like, it thinks you actually unplugged and replugged, so it starts the whole process over again. Uh, some of the switches and the hubs I've used that I've known to work, one of the ones listed here, uh, Cool Gear, USB is Intel only. Uh, we just bought one of those a couple months ago, tried to give it a hand. Really nice piece of hardware, power supply on things like this big, but will not work with M1 the right way. Uh, I did open an Apple case, never got anywhere. Um, again, of course, with all these hubs, as my former SE engineer used to tell me all the time, mileage may vary. Typically, though, if it works once, it'll probably work for you again and for a while. This thing with the, the M1, it comes down to, to multi-transactional transactors. It's something about the way that the hardware provides to your computer uh, the abilities to connect the speeds. My understanding is that like Intel just ignores some of them, whereas M1 listens to everything and then doesn't choose. <clears throat> That's why I couldn't get the cool gear to work. Sadly, I think that's also why my Nostrus doesn't work anymore either. You know those little hand things from like the 2000s? USB port? No. And sadly, it don't work either. <laughs> I don't know if anybody knows, but Automator's capable of doing iPads too, or at least up until Big Sur. Uh, after Big Sur, the Wi-Fi profile fails, but it also does not install it. At least through the command line, I fail, but it still works. So going through this, and, and honestly, like after being here this week, you kind of have to ask yourself, am I reinventing the wheel? Uh, you know, I mean, all this stuff could be done over the air. Um, I could allow end users to erase their own devices. You know, there's plenty of ways that you could be doing this. And that kind of brings me back to the iPad growth in our district. While iPads have grown, the amount of tech staff to do it has not. Um, which, I mean, you know, common education. But as we go through over the years, we keep adding devices. We're not adding people. So how do you deal with that? You know, I will say uh, in 2020, when everything got crazy, we did pick up a half tech, you know, to get us through there. Um, <clears throat> and then... As we kept going and things weren't looking better, we turned them into a permanent tech, mainly because I had to go out for a while. And then, of course, now we're back to tech and a half because COVID's over, right? And everything's okay. <laughs> Not that we bought a bunch of hardware, it never went away. Uh, that being said, even though we're back to a half tech, we have recently added a student help desk that's really helping to get these things done. Uh, that half tech, by the way, it is Jennifer. She's sitting right here. She presented with me last summer when we, for uh, campfire sessions. This is our uh, year one help desk, kids. We, uh, again, talking about reinventing the wheel. I mean, all these kids in our program, they all have access to Mosul to do administrator functions. But, and again, the, the common thing here you're going to see is we still have to touch these things. You still have to hold them. Uh, this is from our AGI field trip. I don't know if anybody talked to PJ downstairs. That's my guy. But, like, you know, we, we uh, took our whole class out there to see them, uh, see what they do in person. So talking about our tickets, the issues we deal with. Um, all the iPad recovery, like kids who leave a district and never return my stuff, we deal with that. Uh, you know, new iPad assignments, returning devices that have been lost for years. Um, and also those great, you know, my iPad's doing that thing. And I'm just going to throw it in the mail and send it to you. <laughs> all these things have something in common, is that they all end up in your hand eventually. And based on that, you start thinking, well, I mean, what could a script do? 
I mean, in this case, I mean, I use these scripts to check the device, of course, with trust, restoring, erasing, um, you know, again, no trust, we'll figure it out, removing loss mode. Uh, typically, if without these things, we would have to go into the system and, you know, look in <coughs> our inventory system, fix it there. Go to Mosul, let's take loss mode off. Well, we can't see it, now we're gonna deal with it. That sort of stuff. And the same token, I mean, Think about your own workflows. What can such a script do on your end that maybe gives you a couple extra seconds to do something else? The nice thing about doing it this way, of course, is it's pretty much repli replicable. Um, I don't know, I think maybe every hundred to go through my office, maybe two do something odd. And normally we catch them before they end up in somebody's hands. Odd being they just don't finish. Uh, and that might go back to the Wi-Fi profile thing. So, now what? I mean, you've had to sit here and hear all this. What do you do with it? So this is my thing. This is where shake and bake comes into play. And that's what I call this whole monstrosity of scripts and whatnot. I am going to tell you this is where things start to get away from that universal window. Everything up to this point, DP is DP. <coughs> uh, all this stuff is totally replicatable, though. And I've documented in the... GitHub as many places as I can to try to be clear what this does and what you need to do it on your own. So, talking about shake and bake, uh, this is a combination of most basic libraries with the CFG util to automate that iPad cycle. Uh, most basic, by the way, is in another one of my little projects. It's basically just taking and putting common commands like erase, assign, and those things at the command line. So I can take an iPad off the shelf and assign it to a kid right here, just from the command line. Um, I have a lot of Linux history going way back. I love the command line. Jen, maybe, what do you think? Not so much yet. We'll work on that. If I wasn't such a cat, I'd be a <laughs> <laughs> No, I got pulled in other directions of the school. You're so right. <laughs> <laughs> going back to it. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I said, so I mean, we're automating a little bit of the wiping, the cleaning up, pretty much the clean up of these devices. <coughs> Shake and bake takes things a little bit further, though. Uh, again, this, I know this doesn't look good, but it's in the repo, so you can see it better. Like, Shake and bake takes and adds MDM functionality. Like, it detects, like, do we have trust? If we don't, then it goes ahead and it uh, uses MDM, or at least we try. And you're going to see that hopefully here in a second. Um, but like it'll ask MDM, when was the last time the iPad checked in? How many hours? Less than 24, we'll try to wipe it that way. More than 24, I don't try. Because uh, most of the time they fail. This is the part we get to the live demo. Um, normally, I would just jump into a live demo and just say it's no big deal. However, when I got here Monday night, after playing with my work Mac, it decided that uh, it doesn't want to do any of this anymore. So it does this great thing where it picks up the device and it just keeps dropping it. I don't know what I've done to my machine. I'm sure, I'll, you know, that's fun for next week. Uh, so I just went ahead and grabbed my actual laptop and moved everything over. So if anything does anything weird, that's probably why. Or at least that's the excuse we'll go with. So, going back to the live demo. Mm -hmm. I will tell you also, of all bad ideas, I'm going to use a hotspot on my phone for this, which adds a whole other level of, of, well, frankly, stupidity on my own part. It's funny, when you think about this presentation, you go, oh, my network in my office works, I have control, I can do whatever I want, right? And then you come out here and you go, wait, we don't own this network, and they're not going to trust us. <laughs> uh, again, the iPad just, not, just barely set up. I'm going to plug it in, uh, the script's already running. See, oh, yeah, that would help, wouldn't it? Thank you. One second.
How about that? There we go. So we're going to give it a second. It's going to pick up here. So you notice it says no AC2 trust. That's because I forgot to open Apple Configurator first. <laughs> it's funny, I've been doing this now for well, pretty much most of the pandemic. I still make stupid mistakes like that. <laughs> All right. Here, let's try this one more time, but with Apple Configurator. In the last couple versions of iOS, I doubt it. It used to. You used to be able to get, you know, uh, was it the camera kit, the USB, and then plug them all in. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't think that's an option anymore, though. So what happens if you don't haven't already trusted it though? Well, I know, but you have to allow the computer. The iPad has to allow you to plug that in. Yeah. yeah. So if the iPad was rebooted, it's locked. We're stuck. One. Here, hold on one second. Boop. There you go. So you don't uh, push a profile to basically uh, let the iPads connect promiscuously to USB devices? No. We actually push the profile to not allow it. Okay. Um, our kids, I'm trying to think, I, I kind of feel like the first answer for destroying one of our iPads probably starts with USB, plugging it in. Um, so we just don't allow them to do that. Try this again. Again, just remember, I, I showed you the live demo warning, right? Try that again. All right, so if we had a nice edit, like we can say this never happened, right? <laughs> so it's checking the device again over USB. In a second here, it'll kick over and start doing this thing, hopefully. Uh, while that's running, th somebody else had a question over there, right? Yes, no? Okay. This is a part of me that wishes I would have recorded this too. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I, yeah, yeah, and I think that's what got me into this boat to begin with. <laughs> hmm. Okay, fine, we'll try it the other way then. CFUG util runs these kind of just spins them off every time a device picks up so that's why I have to go back and kill this because if I don't it's just going to assume the iPad is still connected and not do anything with it for a while
I mean, I don't know. You ever had anything in your office just melt that should work? Okay, I'm not going to tie you guys up with this. I will post the actual running video later. Just because, I don't know. I think, I, I think probably maybe the more you think you know, the less you honestly know, right? <laughs> see. Let's go back here. <clears throat> So, kind of bringing this back around, what about other MDM people? Again, uh, Shake and Bake is heavily based on using Mo's Basic as the core. Uh, Mo's Basic, of course, is very documented. There's a lot, if you go through and read, it tells you uh, what I'm doing. What am I getting back? One of the things, like when I initially started with Mo's Basic, I just wanted inventory information. I wanted to be able to dump everything to a CSV and then run it against other things. And then you start getting all that data, and you go, well, what else can I do with it? It's kind of how you get here. <coughs> so sadly, without an actual working demo, I'm very early. Um, questions, comments, concerns? <laughs> So you'd mentioned the trust relationship a couple of times. Can you touch on how one sets that up? Or where does that come from? Okay, so in I can tell you from in Mosul, when you set up the your enrollment, there's a place where it says about supervision identities. You can see uh, I can download it from there. So it, like I said, from Mosul enrollment setting it up, you can grab your supervision identity there. You install it on your machine. You set it up to use Apple Configurator, and you should be good to go as long as it unlocks. Uh, I wasn't into this when we were Jam. Jam, I'm sure Jam has it. I just don't know where it is. Okay, so, that, so you were saying that comes from the MDM. Yes. Essentially, and that's OTA enrollment. Part of that. No, that's just a straight enrollment. Okay. Yep. Yeah, because you can also set up where you can say, well, here's my custom certificate, or here's my, you know. We initially started with our own custom one when we migrated, and th that didn't work out too well. <laughs> it was better to just use what they were already using on their end. Oh, look, it actually wiped. As soon as you quit looking at things, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course. <sighs> Computers always think they're funny. Anybody else? Questions? Thoughts? Oh, yes. In particular, like, why you would probably not do this. <laughs> so I can ask you, how do you oh, handle, um, it seems like the workflow you're talking about here is for devices you've already owned and enrolled and you're just refreshing them. Yes. Does this also work for you for brand new devices? Yes. Uh, we just brought in 600 nines uh, before we came here. <clears throat> Once they've all been set up in Apple School Manager as well as set up for enrollment, we'll just go ahead and start shoving them through here. I will not have inventory records, but that's okay because most basic has some stuff in there to just make assumptions. Like, oh, well, we'll get our asset tags from inventory later. So just go ahead and shove it in. I said it's going in the background. Just not the way I wanted it to. <laughs> yes, sir. We throw the box over. Not not to dwell on this, but yeah. can you explain what your um, concern is with having an active USB port on a iPad with your students? Pretty much that they can plug things into it. Uh, I, I don't know any other way to jailbreak a device without USB. It's what we've always done. Nobody's ever given us a good reason to stop doing it. Okay. Um, we typically try to stick with, if it isn't broken, don't fix it. Uh, I mean, obviously, I mean, like cameras, for instance. We don't allow cameras, and then we did. And then after six months of that, we don't do it no more. 
on a grade level basis. <laughs> um, like I said, K, was it K1? K and 1 are never allowed to have cameras ever again. And middle school, it's still up in the air. Like I said, nobody's asked for a good reason to turn it back on. Uh, during COVID, we did have some people who wanted to use Zoom and physically pair to their device. Their iPad is a secondary display. Um, we never got it working, so we just left it off. Typically for us, it was easier just to tell them just join Zoom with your iPad, join Zoom with your Mac, and carry about your business. Any more questions? They said, I am sorry, my, my demo jumped out the window, but of course, why not? <laughs> Just looking at what you've got going here, I can picture a uh, use case for uh, something I deal with, which is getting devices back after the end of mm -hmm. usage, and they're just sort of coming back, and we have to make sure they're completely wiped before we send them to be recycled. Um, I think I could probably figure out a logic to grab the serial number of the device, grab, or at least the UDID, and, and somehow catalog it. And that way I have a record that, yes, mm -hmm. it's gone through this process and then put it into a spreadsheet or something like that. So I'm just kind of brainstorming in my head how that would work. Do you have something like that? You mentioned a database of Yeah, these. so uh, using most basic unassign, <coughs> it actually has the options in there where I'll take an iPad and I'll scan it off using my RFID scanner on the desk. And it will write it down in a local config file. It will then tell inventory that it's no longer assigned. Uh, we use Instant IQ for inventory, so they have a pretty heavy API over there. With our workflow, we like to tell Instant IQ, like, unassign. It's in storage. And I also make a note that it went through my process at so-and-so time. So at least this way, in a couple of months, if we go, well, where's that iPad? I can easily see, well, it went into my office at some point. <clears throat> this is also good, like, for we do buybacks. So like you were saying about collecting. Every school year, we collect first grade, fourth grade, and eighth grade. So that's about 900 devices, give or take. Two-thirds of those will go to buyback this year. But they all go through this because I use this to wipe them. There's a flag in there where you can say about don't set up. So just wipe. Just wipe, make note, get out. So we use that for buyback. Actually, what we ended up doing in June is we wiped them all that way. And then once they're reassigned to children, we'll go back through with CFG Util, make sure they're running the latest OS, and they have what they need. And then hopefully, second week of August, we'll be handing all the stuff out again. Yes, sir? Uh, go talk to PJ, because <laughs> he got first shot. <laughs> Next. You throw the box back here, please. With running uh, CFG util, does that make uh, configurator multi-threaded? If you're on a like a Thunder Sync and you're plugging in 16 iPads, will it do individual iPads, or does it have to do them all at once? No, they each get their own process spun up, so they're done individually. The nice thing about the Thunder Sync is it has this really sweet API, and that's all I know about the API. I just know I want to play with it. Like, we, I just found out that they've released an update where you can see the individual ports in a nice GUI, and you can access the API through your local machine. I think that's going to be really helpful. One of the things we have also with this program is every elementary has a cabinet of loaner iPads. When a loaner comes back, you throw it in the cabinet, and Shake and Bake wipes it on a signs that does all those things <coughs> and gets it ready for the next person coming through. Um, I'm trying to think where I was going with that. I'm sorry. <laughs> but we use this in a lot of places, just like that with, with handouts. We still have shared mode iPads. That's kind of what I've been trying to get away from. Um, no luck there yet, sadly. <laughs> Anybody have shared mode iPads in their environment? Yeah? Shared mode. We, prior to COVID, I had like, five to ten of them in every classroom. And that was a nightmare. 
Well, yeah. I mean, at least with this, I mean, every, even my loaners, I mean, it's still, it's a single user iPad, and then it's just wiped out like that. I know there's new stuff coming for redistributing devices and things, and maybe at that point, maybe some of this will be less useful, but we'll have to get into that and do the research. Also, do you use any cloud storage, uh, have your kids sign in to their managed Apple ID? Yeah, so that? it's district policy that managed Apple ID is required on all devices, uh, second grade and up. It, is that part of your script? No, we can't do anything with that yet. Okay. My real hope is, um, what was it? It was announced last summer about, was it shared? What am I thinking here? With MDM, you log into MDM, and MDM should be able to log you into other things in the future. There we go. My hope is that eventually, if I can get you logged into Mosul, that Mosul will get you logged into iCloud. I don't know how plausible it is. What do you think? Do we think it's plausible? Yeah. I hope. Anybody else? Well, again, I'm sorry the demo didn't work the way it wanted to. Well, actually, maybe it did work the way it wanted to, just not the way we wanted it to. Uh, I will post a working video in the repo there, and that's about it. Thank you. Uh, have a good afternoon.